In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be continuing our examination of the photosynthesis topic, focusing on this video on absorption spectra. Now, in order to understand what this topic is about, we're going to dip into IGCSE and GCSE physics, because hopefully you recognise here that we have the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, if you followed my videos at physics, GCSE and IGCSE level, You'll remember that I said you had to learn the order of waves starting, it doesn't matter which end you start, but there was a song I recommended that you watched on YouTube, which has actually become quite famous. I think it's sung by some South Koreans. I'm not going to sing it like I can't sing, but it goes radio waves, microwaves, infrared, radiation. So you can recognise what I'm singing very poorly here as being waves of the electromagnetic spectrum because it goes ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. Now the thing to notice here is the wavelengths, which remember, the wavelength is the distance between two peaks. So that's a very long wavelength for radio waves, and then if we compare down the other end, here we have very short wavelengths for gamma rays. So the electromagnetic spectrum shows a series of waves, doesn't matter which end you start, but the key point here is that they have different wavelengths. Now. The reason why I'm so interested in this to do with photosynthesis is if we look at the visible light aspect of the electromagnetic spectrum, which they've actually pulled out here, effectively this diagram down here is zooming in on the visible light. So you can actually see the visible light, remember, is made up of a spectrum of colours and that these colours have different wavelengths. Red over here at 700 nanometers has the longest wavelength, violet over here has the shortest wavelength at 400 nanometers. But why is that important for photosynthesis? Now, in terms of photosynthesis, remember we need light energy in order to cause the reaction between carbon dioxide and water. Now, it is visible light that the plants are using, and it's particular colors of visible light. It's important that you remember that chlorophyll is the photosynthetic pigment found within the plant leaves. And notice that chlorophyll absorbs which kinds of visible light the most? Well, that is the red and the blue light most effectively. So if we look back at the diagram, we're looking here and we're looking here. And you could actually read out those various wavelengths responsible. So around 700 nanometer, which is responsible for red light, blue light is around 480. Now, crucially, green light is not absorbed effectively. In fact, it is reflected, and that is actually why most plants have green leaves, because they are reflecting green light, so therefore they appear green. So green light is absorbed less effectively, and most is reflected. Therefore, leaves containing chlorophyll will appear green to us. We're now going to consider this graph, which is actually an absorption spectrum. Now, I've already mentioned that chlorophyll is the pigment which is responsible for absorbing that light, and the two main types you need to be aware of are the most common. They're chlorophyll A and B. And we can actually use this graph to back up what I was just saying. So if we look at both types of chlorophyll, the wavelength of light that they absorb most, well, let's have a look. For chlorophyll B, we're looking at this peak, if we look down, we can see that that is around 480 nanometers, which using the helpful scale below, we can see that that therefore is the blue light. For chlorophyll A, let's look again. We can see that this is the peak for chlorophyll A. Reading down, we can see that it occurs around 680 nanometers. These are just approximations, by the way. But again, looking at the useful diagram, we can see that that is red light which actually backs up what we were saying, that red and blue light are absorbed most effectively, green light is absorbed less effectively, which is why most plants appear green. I hope you found this video helpful, guys. I'll be back soon with another video on action spectra.